Okay, so tethering in Capture One with Fujifilm. What do you need? You just need three things. You need a computer with Capture One on it, you need a Fuji camera, uh, and you need a tether cable. Uh, the tether cable I use is by Tether Tools. I found them to be robust, very high quality, and they always work. I have used other cables here and there when I needed to, but um, I've never been fully happy with them, and some of them just plain don't work well. Uh, this has always worked for me. It's fantastic, I love it. Um, I have a handful of them over there for different cameras, and they're really good. Um, and you need obviously a camera which is capable of tethering. Uh, Fuji support that in the X-T3, which is what I have here, in the X-Pro2, which is what's filming me there. Um, and I think the X-H1, uh, obviously the X-T4 and X-Pro3, are you with me? will have it. Um, the tier of cameras like the X-T30 and that don't support tethering. So if it's important to you, it's something to consider if you're buying a Fuji camera, uh, it might not be. It's very important to me because um, I shoot an awful lot of portraits and headshots. So particularly with headshots, I can have them directly wired into the computer and we can see them in real time. I click the button within a second, they're there, which means then the client can come over and they're already in the computer. We can click through the ones we like and we can tailor those a little bit as we need to really narrow down that look. That's so much faster than having to review them later and go, oh, I wish we would have done this or that. Uh, you know, that communication with the client, involving them in the process, really super. And that's part of the reason why I absolutely adore shooting tethered when I'm with a person. Uh, if you really need to, you can beam that out onto a bigger monitor. Uh, you can use Apple TV to mirror your screen up to a 40 inch or 50 inch TV if you want to. Super impressive. And I tend to just stick to my little laptop sitting on my tether table, which is here. Um, it's a really nice setup. It's simple, it's neat, it strips down easy, and I wouldn't want to be without it nowadays. So there are some settings you need to change in your camera to get this to work. Um, I generally just shoot from the camera, which is just normal settings, and just use the computer as a place to display the images. But if I'm setting up some still life to shoot, as an example, I'm gonna throw some stuff here from the studio. Um, put, that on, put that on a tripod, <laughs> I got a message there. Put that on a tripod and uh, shoot some things. But I'm gonna control it from the computer today, um, which could be handy if you have a camera overhead that's a bit out of the way, you uh, want a remote control it. So there's a few things you need to set up uh, in your menu system on your camera in order to get Capture One to operate the camera correctly. So you need to go through the menu. This is on an X-T3 here. And I'm gonna go into button dial settings and I'm gonna sc scroll down and I'm going to scroll down to ISO DAW settings and make sure they're on command. The default is auto. And uh, then scroll down to the page and you'll get to your aperture ring setting and make sure that is set to command as well. And after that, you are good to go. So Capture One and Fuji. I have Capture One Pro 20 open here for Fuji. Um, I'm connected to my X-T3 camera with a quality Tether Tools cable. So if you want to control your camera from your computer while tethered, you uh, simply have to get up into the camera menu on Capture One. And here we can just uh, click off a photograph and it appears quite nicely on our screen for us almost instantly. Um, but you can control more settings. Uh, if you set the camera correctly, you can adjust all the settings you need to. You can adjust your focus, you can adjust your depth of field with your aperture, and you can adjust your shutter speed and your ISO sensitivity, uh, as well as lots of other things. And it gives you a full list of what you can do uh, by running down the menu structure. We have our camera connected. You can see it's a Fujifilm X-T3. And our settings here. This is our shoot button. If I uh, take a shot, it should uh, click there and come in. There's the shot. Uh, our settings are changed down here in camera settings. Now you'll see a camera focus tab here, but unfortunately that doesn't work at the moment. If I go into camera settings here, I can see I'm selected the Fuji X-T3. I'm going to save to SD card and I currently have raw only saving to the SD card, but it's also transmitting to my computer like a backup. Uh, capture delay, I can set up for two or 10 seconds, just like in the camera. Um, I'm not using capture delay. We're on a tripod in my office, it's fine. The tasty stuff, exposure, so we can here, we can change our exposure. We can change our ISO setting and our shutter speed. We can even change our f-stop. Isn't that fantastic? Of course, if I go into live view now to see, and we'll just hit start live view and we'll get a real time look at our exposure. It's way too dark, of course. Of course it is. So let's bring us back into here. So. Let's shoot a bit of 
a bit wide open here. One fifteenth of a second, back at ISO 80, and we'll go back in here, start our live view and see how we're doing. Well, we're pretty good, but I don't think I've really focused on anything with that lens. Let's get the Rubik's Cube in focus. So I'll zoom in on that. Now that's nearer than what the focus was. So I'll just tap nearer a couple of times. And as you can see, it's slowly starting to come into focus. There we go. That's pretty good. Um, if you want to zoom in, you can hit Z. Uh, zoom in again. So there you can see we're at 400% of screen. I can just zoom that a little bit more. And you can really kind of tailor your focus in. But to be honest, I think at this level with the X-T3, you're pretty much good to go. So pause live view, back into the main screen, and we'll take a shot. And hopefully, for all things being equal, that should have focused in on our Rubik's Cube, which it has. So there you go, in on the Rubik's Cube, or near enough to it. And that's really it. Straightforward and simple. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.